to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hi, everybody, and welcome tonight. Okay, so I just forgot the police commission stuff. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Um, do you all have over there? Yeah. Those agendas, if there anybody wants. Okay, so first, um, so the agenda we have the reports, the hiring of two dispatchers. Um, I signed the title, which we already authorized me to do. Um, we're gonna, we have a grievance that um, we're going to have to do a motion to go into executive session. And I have the USERT um, on the agenda for the town board, but I'm moving it over to here for discussion here um, because it's relative to uh, you. And then I also got some requests to spend money on USERT. We haven't even approved it, so we have to have a conversation. <laughs> okay? So with that, um, is there anybody who would like to speak for public comment on police issues? Okay, so with that, Chief, um, why don't you start with your reports? Uh, hey, for the month of April, uh, we had two defensive action reports. Uh, the first one uh, was involving a 19 year old uh, male, white, 6'1, 175 pounds, medium bill. Uh, the uh, defensive action in use was a firearm. Uh, Officer responded to uh, just across our town line on uh, one of our back roads uh, for a burglary in progress. Uh, state police had an extended uh, response now, uh, so we sent an officer to the scene to secure it. Um, when the officer arrived, I found that there was an individual and entered a home. Uh, while residents were upstairs uh, where they called 911. Uh, the officer used his firearm, secured the person that he found downstairs. Um, and then eventually turned over to the state police. Uh, ended up that the individual was actually a nearby neighbor that uh, was intoxicated into the wrong home. Uh, so I don't believe there was any charges pressed, uh, but again, that was going to be handled by the state police. Uh, but uh, no other incident happened. The next defensive action report involves a uh, one report, and it's a 22 year old male Hispanic, 5'5, 135 pounds, medium build. Uh, the defensive action is a takedown, and the charges was disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Uh, the individual was placed into custody for disorderly conduct, and he was advised he was under arrest. He pushed away from the officer and attempted to flee. Uh, the officer uh, used an arm bar and took him down to the ground, uh, and he was able to take him into custody with the assistance of another officer. The individual did suffer a uh, abrasion on his hand, was treated by the Plus Rescue Squad, but uh, refused any medical treatment. No further action on that. We have two uh, combinations for the month. Uh, the first one is for uh, Officer Calvin Halstead. Uh, and the individual wrote a letter saying that he wanted to bring uh, to my attention a combination. Uh, he recently was a victim of a larceny from his home. Officer Halstead was professional courtesy uh, and courtesy were Curtis. outstanding. <laughs> and courtesy were outstanding uh, in a very difficult situation. Um, goes on to uh, say that he had been in the community for 34 years and it was his first interaction with the New Falls Police Department. And he must say that he was very most impressed. Uh, thank you for uh, you and your department for your continued efforts to uh, maintain our safety. Uh, excellent letter. Obviously, one that we're we'll going to uh, uh, the next one is from the dispatcher we just wrote for an individual that had dropped off uh, some muffins and fruit uh, in appreciation for everything that we do. Um, fruit so was in the fridge. The fruit was in the fridge. Um, it didn't last very long, so it's good. It's good food to eat and get away from the donuts and stick to some fruits and uh, healthy foods. Um, but uh, again, this is just something that the dispatcher put out to make everybody aware. I like to share these things because it's something nice that mm -hmm. community members will do uh, to show their appreciation to us. That's all I have for foundations. Okay. Is there anything else in your reports or anything you need to go over? That's it. 
Oh, that's all. Okay. So um, we have the hiring of two part-time dispatchers, and I suspect they're both here. Yes, they are. So, um, Sergeant Lu uh, Lieutenant Lucchese, I'm sorry, would you like to come up and introduce and uh, tell us a little bit about everybody? I assume you were here to do that, not to just sit in the. Bench. You got to come. You got to come so the camera can get you. <laughs> come on up. Come up closer so they. So, um, Kaylin and uh, Ryan. <laughs> Kaylin Riley and Jarrell Dixon. Um, Two local residents. Um, Kayla just completed her undergraduate studies at John Jay, and Darrell is a student uh, at SUNY New Paltz. Um, and uh, both will be starting their field training as part time dispatchers uh, during the summer months, uh, and then we'll take over positions as, as part time dispatchers and will be utilized as needed uh, to uh, fill our schedule. Um, we are excited for the things that we heard um, during their background investigations. and. Uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, bringing them up. So, uh, Terrific. With your permission, we'd like to uh, have them sworn in. Yeah, we could do that. So, um, I'm sorry, I have to just ask again the exact names so we can make the motion to hire them. Jarrell Dixon. Jarrell Dixon. And can you spell them so Rosanna can get it correct? Oh, you got Never mind. Okay. <laughs> never, never mind. <laughs> Caitlin Riley. Caitlin Riley. Okay, so do I have a motion to hire Jarrell Dixon and Caitlin Riley as part-time dispatchers? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion so carried. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to the Falls. Come on up, you're going to get sworn in. You're going to get sworn in. <laughs> I'll do the follow-up. No, no, you do it. No, please do. Just make sure you send them actually to... Well, Julie tomorrow, because Ju Carol's gone. If you send them to me, I'll get them to Julie. Yeah, yeah. Well, or we'll give you Julie's number. Aye. Jarrell Dixon. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of part time dispatcher. According to the best of my ability. Can see the back. Oh, come back now? Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Right. I got that. Dixon, <laughs> thank you. We appreciate it. Welcome to you. Welcome. Congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. And I will faithfully discharge the duties of this part time dispatcher according to the best of my abilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to both of you. It's nice to have you both aboard. Okay, so um, next what we have is okay. So we are being asked to um, join another cooperative agreement through the county for the Ulster County Emergency Response Team, which is um, similar to. Urgent, where it's uh, they're asking for different officers being assigned from every t for different towns to make up a task force, and this is for training. Uh, well, to be in case of an active shooter. What you want to do a little bit of background? Yes. Uh, this is the uh, county uh, ESU emergency response uh, unit. They uh, we've actually been a member of this for many many years. Uh, we've always had uh, two assigned to it. Uh, when Sergeant Baker had retired, we never got to in his position as we were in the uh, regrouping stage of our agency. Uh, so this is it's a, nothing new. Uh, they are called USER uh, for the Ulster County Emergency Response Team. We've been, again, apart for a long time. Uh, the agreement that they have put forward basically uh, 
just so to piggyback what the agreement for urge is. Uh -huh. uh, it's very similar, uh, similar in the language. They never had the language written out that way. It was just a simple agreement years ago that was put into place. Uh, so what we're doing now is, what the county is doing now is they're actually putting a actual agreement forward that's very similar to the agreement under urgent. So it's pretty much mirror, uh, mirroring the, the, the policies and agreements. So um, just a real quick thing, in the budget, um, I didn't have a chance to double check um, when I got this, but you know, again, we approve, even though it's in the budget, mm -hmm. I approve or Jeff, um, the deputy supervisor, approves every expenditure before we cut a PO. So the, um, the expenses in here for the different gear for the, for the UCERT, that's in the budget? Yes, yeah, there's actually a line for that in our budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what all this is. Okay, so um, let me just, yeah, Rosanna, can you do me a favor tomorrow? Can you give that to um, Rachel? Okay. Um, okay, so um, we have a, well, let me just read this out loud so the board can authorize me to sign it. Whereas various town police departments of the County of Ulster, together with the Ulster County Sheriff's Office and the SUNY New Pulse Campus Police Department, as member agencies, seek to cooperate and act collectively as an emergency response team, such task force known as the Ulster County Emergency Response Team, herein referred to as USERT. Is that how they call it? USERT? Yes. <laughs> whereas the urgent, uh, um, whereas the mission of USERT is to achieve maximum coordination and cooperation through utilizing the combined resources of member agencies to support the various municipalities within the County of Ulster with a rapid tactical response to critical incidents. And whereas membership in the USERT task force will benefit the town of New Paltz in that it will create a specialized unit to provide a rapid tactical response to critical incidences and to serve as a resource for the town of New Paltz police and law enforcement agencies within the county. And whereas the town board has reviewed the intermunicipal cooperative agreement, which is just in case anybody's interested, this is what it is. <laughs> um, the cooperative agreement, um, where was I? Um, okay, whereas the town board has reviewed the intermunicipal cooperative agreement, proposed by the Ulster County Sheriff, a copy of which is annexed here to and made part of this resolution. And whereas the Chief of the Town of New Pulse has also reviewed the annexed intermunicipal, annexed intermunicipal cooperative agreement and has, rec has recommended that the Town Board prove the agreement. Now th therefore be it resolved that upon the motion of, who would like to move this? So moved. Um, and seconded by who? Yeah, second. Okay. Um, Hereby approves the annexed agreement and membership in the task force and be it further resolved, the police chief of the town of New Paltz is authorized to execute the annexed agreement on behalf of the town. So um, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion so carried. Okay. And I'll just add a little bit more to uh, the importance of this uh, group and, and program team. Uh, anytime you do a, a search warrant that is a uh, more of a high uh, risk type of search, um, the team is used, uh, you know, rather than just using our own officers, because they train and they do that every day. Uh, so it's always better to use someone that has that type of experience and training um, and having a team rather than uh, just using different officers that maybe don't do it on a regular basis. So it has been very positive, um, as well as when we have barricaded subjects. Uh, we have a high risk uh, type of from bank robberies, they send the team down. Uh, so it's, it's very positive to be a member and part of it. And it goes along the same as urgent. And, and Sergeant Butler. Butler. Sergeant Butler, that's it. He's a team leader on, on the uh, group. He's been here for many years. Uh, we've actually just added two more to the team uh, because you don't always have the ability for people to be there all the time. Um, you know, so if something's going on, so it's better to expand it so you have a couple more people that can be available. Um, there's a tryout that took place with their group, with the group that you serve. Uh, they have protocols that have to be met in order for members to make the team. You can't just send somebody there saying, we want to announce your son and so There's a whole protocol that they go for. So. Okay. okay, terrific. Rosanna, I was going to give this to you, but I realized um, it's got to get scanned. We always scan in the contracts before we, uh, but then actually you have to sign it before it gets scanned. Okay, so before, okay, before, well, we can send this one. I saw, I filled in everything, but I just have to fill in this one. Unless, do you only need one? Or should I do the second one? We can fill all this stuff in, right? Okay, you might want to do it neater than me anyway. Okay, so with that, the only thing left is we actually have a grievance that we um, need to discuss in executive session. So can I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? 
Yeah, and then okay. actually, uh, while the camera's still on, though, the only discussion I want to have is I, I want to thank we'll be approving a uh, application later for the SOS for kids. And I understand your team, you're able to get a volunteer office of control traffic yes. at the one place it's needed. So I want to, is it going to be you? No, I can go ahead and push you. Okay. okay, well, thank you very much, though, for whatever office the officer involved. Please thank them. Okay. That's okay. Well, thanks, Sergeant Butler, for us for volunteering his time. That does save our community, and it's in a great event. So, thank okay, thanks. And you know what? Before we just go into executive session, does anybody well, you want to just do the minutes? So we're just taking absolutely. Five of the minutes. Okay. So um, I need a motion to um, for the March nineteenth, twenty fifteen minutes. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motions are carried. And then I have a motion for April 16th. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay. Second. Have... second moved. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Okay. So now we're just. Is there uh... any others, Roseanne? Which one? Oh, no, no, but we have minutes for the town board meeting. I'm just at the police no. commission. Remember, you have all of last year's police commission meeting. Oh, I didn't put those up. Wait, wait, wait. I sent them out twice. No, you probably did. I, I sent them out April 22nd. These are what I had in the packet. Oh, you do. We have uh, a special meeting we're probably going to We're going to do next week, so. Next week. Okay. Okay, great. So I, I did. I do it. I'll make sure I put it in my calendar. I already did the motion and second for the executive session, yeah. right? Yep. Okay. So all in favor? Okay, thanks. We'll be back. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. There we go. I did that too, but. Oh, okay. <laughs>
Hi, everybody, and welcome tonight. Um, so, let me just, there's agendas up here if anybody wants an agenda. Okay, so um, I'm not going to do announcements now. I'll do the announcements after this part of the meeting. Um, so, um, as per our contract, uh, we have the ability to have somebody from Time Warner come in and be available to the public for questions. And so per the contract, we arrange for tonight for Time Warner to be here. And we have David Whalen, who's the Director of Government Relations for the Northeast Region, Central New York. So um, I'm going to really turn it over to him. Um, David, what we might want is for you to go up to the sure. microphone, because sure. then we can get you on camera. And then really, you could say whatever it is you want to say or talk about, or we can just open it up to questions. Sure. However, you just open it up. And okay. Okay, so I just want to um, just acknowledge that in the room is Don Kerr and Andrew Russo, who both worked um, on the committee to um, uh, um, adopt the contracts on both behalf of the town and the village. So I just wanted to acknowledge that they're both here. So Ira, why don't you? Uh, okay. Okay. You don't have to. Well, uh, let's just try to figure out. No, no, I'm just trying to figure out. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to let the audience have a microphone. Yes, we'll figure it out. Okay. Unless David goes over there. Why don't we have then, David go there? Yeah, David, why don't you, you know what? Well, we'll let Iris see. Iris, Iris, okay. Iris after, no, Iris, after, no, I want you trying to coordinate so to make sure the camera and the microphone. So we're going to let you sit there. When you're done, I'm going to have David come sit at the table, and then whoever wants to speak can go up there. So this way we. Okay. Just, just sit. <laughs> okay, so Iris, go ahead. My um, first question. Why is it that they feel it's necessary? But the question is not to us. You're asking no. him. Well, I'm back. I'm back. I'm do this way. I'm no, no, but, but you're asking the question to no, him, not to no, us. No. So. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, why is it that Time Warner feels it's necessary and proper to why and misrepresent <laughs> to the citizens of New Boston? No idea. Can you ask, uh, ask a specific question? If you think he, that is a specific no, no, question. No, no, no. But you're saying you're saying he lies to the people. Why don't you then say you you're lying about this and this and okay, that? Fine. Because he can't respond otherwise. Okay. Yeah. I will give you a whole bunch of them. No, 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 we can't. Ira, do you have very specific questions on an actual, and, and I, I would prefer if you didn't refer to it as a lie, but I why is it? it is and I can prove it. Like okay, I, I, but it, okay, I, I'm just saying, Ira, maybe but, you can but, use that term. But, but, okay. but I just want to say, with all, I just with want to all say respect. with all fairness, okay, yeah. you know, again, you know, they came down per contract, he is down here, it is a contract, it's a public meeting, he is a guest, even though, yes. by, you know, okay, so even though people don't treat us with respect, I would like for you to please treat him with respect just because you are here at our meeting. So you can ask your questions, I just would ask you to do it respectfully. Well. I didn't think I was being disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Truth is never disrespectful. Okay, Ira, right, well, you got to say. Right. Yeah, so please don't shut me down. Okay. I, I'm not shutting you down, Ira. I just need you to okay, please so be respectful of the speaker. Okay. 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 A matter of protocol. If he's going to go through a million different questions, how are we going to get a chance to ask one specific question? We're not going to leave until you all get a chance to ask your questions. Okay? You have a problem with me asking questions? No, it doesn't say Ira, 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 Ira. You can run the whole meeting. How the hell am I running the meeting? I asked one question. We couldn't get right. one question. Like talking. No, no excuse right. me. Guys, guys, please, 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 please. Ira. Yeah. No, no, no. They just, they just want to make sure they have their questions asked and answered. And we're not going to go anywhere until you have all your questions answered, okay? Ira, right, I just, just asked your question. Go ahead, Ira. I'm accused of dealing with the haters. I'm sorry. I don't know if you can tell that. Okay. First is, Time Warner is denying that there is a senior citizen discount for New Orleans. That, we have, I have, I have been on the Lee Hanson for a little bit over a year. There is a senior citizen discount in the contract, grandfathered. No new people can access the discount of those who have had the discount in the past and continue to have it. And why is Time Warner telling anybody who calls that there's no such thing? I even tested the number myself, pretending to be a senior citizen, which actually I am, but look at it. And 
sometimes the loopholes and they had the appropriate information. They even asked me for my name and address so they could look up my account and prove that they had the discount on the banks. If someone, and what I would ask you to do, if there's someone who specifically has a problem, get that information to Carol Connolly, let her call a list to me. I now have a contact in New York City which administers that portion of the billing service with the discounts, and I will have them research each of those accounts that are in question. That sounds nice, except that it should be something done in public. It shouldn't have to be something that you have to go through a Carol Connolly. If you call on one What number did you call, sir? Well, yeah, there's a specific number you have to call. I did give that to Okay, to how about 718-661-6168, which is your all being represented by the name of uh, Mrs. Rickenbacker, who oh. absolutely denied it and said, even though I filed a complaint with the uh, Public Service Commission, who said there was no such thing, and that, but because I'm pain in the neck, she would consider making it a, a consideration to give me. Is that, is that, do you hear that? No, it's the wrong number. The number you have to call is in New York City. That's the number that Mrs. Rickenbacker gave me when she called me supposedly from your customer. Do you have the number you can give them? I will be happy to supply the number. I'll get it. Okay. I'll need email here. She did it once before, and I think they even put it on one of the... Uh, we put it on our website. Yeah, on the website as well. I'm saying that's the information can you that is documented, by the way, from the public okay. service. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just saying that. I apologize if that happened. We'll fix it. Okay. Do you have a senior discount can, can officer? You, I do now because Mrs. Rickenbach is going okay. to do me a favor here. Can you, um, can you please repeat the number? People in the audience didn't hear it. The actual number? The number. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I have it with me, but I will double oh. check over see. We just send it here so it can be put on the website. Okay, so Carol will be getting it. She's had it. She has it, so that's probably on the website. Yeah. Can you check? check I'm going to check She's right going to get sure about we'll things, things yeah. up. We're going to check. Thank you. Okay. Why is it that you don't keep a record of who you give the senior discounts to? You do. And when you call them, they say they have no record. When they give it to you, they don't tell you what it is. And if you call, again, you call your number. Uh, people say, you know, well, how do we know? We have any proof? They told me. Those are people who are to call. And uh, again, that was supposedly in the year seven. It should work for sure. I understand that, which is why I'm bringing it up now. That's it for um, the, I have another question, too. Why did you stop using, stop telling people your 800 number? Why did we stop? I'm sorry. Why you did you stop publishing your 800 number on the call? I didn't know that we had. We yeah, haven't had. So why is that now a toll charge for you, what you call? Uh, for me, yeah. Um, what they did was they got rid of the call. You can find out the 800 number if you're you know, pushing up, which is what I did. Uh, but basically, what they have done is in the loopholes area, they have given you an 845 number. A lot of seniors in this call pay for that. It's not free. 845 area code from Arizona is, is a pay call. Yeah, it depends on you. It depends on what your telephone you set up is. Okay. All right. Fortunately, I got it, but I didn't think that that. Yeah, that's easy enough. Okay. No problem. The um, uh, one question is um, why is it that if you're out for four hours, you get credit if you call in? I don't see why someone has to call in when you know you're out. You know when you're out. Sometimes. You pick up the phone and you say, oh, okay, let's give you something. Why isn't everybody in that area who's out giving the credit? Why do they have to call you? Because if they don't call you, obviously, you get to save money. I mean, uh, as an example, let's say on the weekend, it's cheaper for you to pay everybody for a day, then have to call out people who do repairs. I mean, obviously that's economics, but why don't you just, you know, the reason he that I got was you have no idea. That's not true. You know exactly when you're out, when you're out. You know exactly how long you're out. Oh, well, sometimes we do. Uh, if, if an accident takes out a pole and power is out, we don't know until we're notified. Yeah, but you're notified. Yeah, eventually, sure. We don't know immediately. 
No, I didn't say. We follow the PSU rules for credits. Any four consecutive hours over prime time, credits must be issued upon upon request. Yeah, I understand that. But my point is, as we requested, but if you know that you are providing service, you should have the people should have to uh, depend upon them calling you to get what they're entitled to. You didn't provide the service, you should back the money. That point, no. Yeah, that, that's wrong. Um, okay, you know, I can I just interrupt for one second to the to the um, <laughs> the video guy. No, I, Evan, Evan. I, to Evan. Evan. Evan, I'm sorry. I said I got a text that said um, that there was no picture. Now there's a picture, but now the sound's off. So if you could just check uh, what's going on. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, uh, Ira. Yes. I just needed to go ahead. With all just, I will just say with all due respect, we did have um, issues with a person who used to represent us. We did deal with that. We have a new person. So I just want to, I just want to put that on record. That's all. Okay. Thanks, okay. Ira. Thank you. Thank you, Ira. Sir. And while Ira's leaving, just so everyone knows, uh, on the town website, uh, it's in a couple different places. The quick. God, I'm sorry. The uh, quickest place to find it, it is on the left side of our web page under links. It's under a uh, heading of Time Warner Senior Discount, uh, or it can also be found under the website on our website under the Senior Corner, and it's labeled Time Warner Senior Discount and Time Warner Cable customers who have received their senior discount in the past will continue to receive this discount. Considering that Time Warner has eliminated all other towns from receiving this discount, we are fortunate to be able to continue this. Please call 718-670-0228. Was your number wrong? You, you said it was a New York City number. It is a New York City number. So it's a 718, it's Brooklyn. So Brooklyn. 718 is Brooklyn. So, uh, it's a 718-718, so it's very possible. Is Brooklyn. Yeah. Yeah. So if it is wrong, we will correct it, but that's the number we do have. And I and suspect, I know, I know that, I know that sorry, what, you, Jeff? 718-670-0228. Uh, and that is correct? That's the number. There we go. Carol, what, what I will say is Carol is very on top of this subject. She deals with Time Warner all the time. She constantly calls, you talk to her, she talks to you. I know you have a relationship. I know that Don Kerr has been in touch with Carol on different issues relative to Time Warner. And um, 
you know, we keep the up, to, you know, the website as up to date as possible all the time. As soon as we get something, it gets posted. So I'm pretty sure that that I information that is correct. And I know Carol's watching because she told me about her sound. Oh, okay. So if there's a problem with the number, she'd probably text me right now and tell me. So I suspect everything's okay. 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 It sounds back better. Thanks. I don't know. I, what I just got was my picture was never off, but the sound is not good. So I don't know. We'll see. Some other people will text in a little bit. Maybe if you just want to make sure you're talking in the microphone. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so Fred. Okay. Excuse me. My name is Fred Bunt. Uh, I live at 1 Howard Street. I've lived in New Post for 60 years. I've been a Time Warner customer since 1976. <laughs> Never missed a payment. Never was late on the payment. When uh, the former uh, town supervisor, Dave Lent, informed me of the fact that as a senior citizen, mm -hmm. I could get one month free from Time Warner, mm -hmm. I immediately made a request for it through whatever he had told me to do. Okay. In the years that have gone by, every time I've talked to Time Warner, they profess they do not know the first thing about this. So you never got it? Never got it. Now I see it in the contract mm -hmm. that you are agreeable to mm -hmm. this. Correct. I certainly have met the requirements that I never be late on payment or miss payment completely. I don't understand why. Someone should tell me this last time I called, mm -hmm. several weeks ago, you have to go to our Ellenville office and make a special request at that point. That doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> no, and neither has any of the other ones that I have talked with. So Just, I would like to know from you mm -hmm. what it is I need to do to get this. Give me your phone number, Fred. I'm okay. I'm going to call someone. I'm on your phone number because that is a triple play. Oh, that's okay. Are you old enough for this one? Yeah. Okay. I don't see there's anybody in this room that is as old as I am. Uh, okay. I'm close. <laughs> I'll be 89 in August. I'm right. right. you beat me. I'm blushing. You beat me. Are you 508? Here we go. No. What are you? 84. 845. Okay. 255 five, okay. 6587. Okay. I will call you. Two of you are eligible for a retroactive adjustment. Now, look at it. Every touch of a customer should be registered right. on the economy. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. So, there should be a record of your calls. Just, just so you. How far back it will go. And thank you, and I appreciate it. I just want to. I just want to point out to you there's been a lot of frustration with the senior discount, mm -hmm. um, you know, for a very, very long time. And again, prior to you coming in, there's been a lot of problems and a lot of issues where people have had to make a lot of phone calls, yeah. you know, and then they get so frustrated, then they call my assistant Carol, and then Carol has to calm everybody down, mm -hmm. and then Carol makes the phone calls to whatever. So we've had problems, so I just want you to understand that you're yeah, seeing I've, some of the frustration. I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know we have a direct contact now. Right. Susan works with on these issues out of New York City. Right. So Thank yeah. you. We'll put this in yeah. her hands. And I do know, and I do, I do know that because Carol, every time she's called you, she's been able to work this stuff out. So I mean, okay. we have been able to. Right, so to thank you. you. Okay. You'll hear from me tomorrow. I'll thank you. you. Okay. And thank and. You, and and yeah. I'd love to know his name. David Whalen. Whalen with an N, like large mammal that spouts water. <laughs> <laughs> you never forget my last name now. And uh, we had Bob Whalen, who was a very well known person in this community. Uh, um, Fred, before you, Fred, 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 before you get, Fred, before you get up, I want to sit down. I'm going to give you another number. What's that? So, uh, sit down. I'm going to give you a number. In case he doesn't get to you tomorrow, which I know he will, here's his number for you to call him. Okay? 607 584 0612. And that's the number he can be reached. That's, that's his number. So if he doesn't call you, you can call him. Now, what is his other number then? 718 Oh, that's the number to call to complain to try to get your senior discount. But he's, he's going to take care of it for you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is that, Fred, thank you. Do you want me to go up to? Thank you, Fred. 
<laughs> That's what they always tell me. <laughs> Hi, thanks for coming. Um, so, as has been said before, it, it, this has been an issue that's been very frustrating. The senior? Yes, and one of the things that we asked for when we were negotiating the franchise renewal was um, to actually have a contact person. For time we wanted to always make sure that we have a contact person who we can call. The issue is kind of discount. Okay. Um, that I mean, was I'm assuming? Yes. Okay. Did she but that con yeah, she did. Unfortunately, that contact person has, you know, they're there for a while and then they're reassigned. Or, and we have, at, well, at that point, we weren't given. Can everybody, can you keep it down? She is a new contact person. What you're saying. Yeah, I mean, right. you may already have a contact person at this point, but um, but that was one thing we wanted to always. Well, I think I think David's been the contact recently, okay. so. Okay. Um, so some of my questions. I mean, I do think Andrew, in a sense that we have sort of, and I have more stuff that Carol's sending me right now because she's obviously watching, but um, I do know that since the changes happened, Carol does get through to whoever she has to get through, and she does have you know, and we have been resolving a lot of these issues, so I think things are running a lot better. So some of my questions have to do with the, uh, the franchise agreement, okay. and um, some of them the town board might be able to answer better than you, but because you're here, I thought it was sure, go ahead. to bring them up. So um, when, the, when the agreement was negotiated and uh, decided upon, there were, there were a lot of verbal things that we agreed upon. This with is the last friend. Uh, yes. Okay. And, and many of them had to do with a, um, support for our public access television station. Okay. Um, and some of it was related to the closing of the construction fund, which is something that was okay. specific for the town as opposed mm -hmm. to the village. Mm -hmm. We negotiated the agreements at the same time. Okay. They were almost identical, except for this issue of the build-down areas, which only applies to the town. Sure. So um, we had identified the remaining areas that were we felt were worth cabling. Mm -hmm. The construction fund money was supposed to finish those maybe five areas, yeah, and then Whatever was um, it was supposed to be finished within a year, and um, whatever remaining money was in the fund, everything was supposed to come back to the general fund at that point. So we did bring that a check back. Yes, we did. About two hundred and fifty-one thousand. We got, so got two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then you kept, I think, about one hundred and forty to continue to do, and, and we still have. Was done with the exception of the uh, Jenkins Lane. Numbers four and twenty on Jenkins, the Brown Brothers original list. Uh, and Susan gave me a, uh, a letter tonight for us to complete that project, and then they will all be completed. Okay, and so when they're all completed, if there's any remaining money that comes back, unless the prices have changed a bit, maybe they went down. I'm hoping uh, it looks like there will be two hundred and sixty-six dollars and nineteen cents left. Okay, well, that was a good estimate. <laughs> 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 yeah, two hundred sixty-six dollars and fourteen cents. So some of the other. Um, Things that we negotiated were Time Warner agreed to come up with capital expense money for public access. Okay. It was a total of fifty thousand right. dollars. It was decided that it would be split between the town and the village based on the fact that um, at that time there were sixty percent of the subscribers were in the town and okay. uh, the remaining forty percent were in the village. So. You know, the, the, the 50000 was to be split, 30000 town, 20000 village. The $20,000 to the village was supposed to come as a lump sum. Okay. So let, let me explain it. It's complicated. Um, the 30000 the town decided that because the town subscribers were now going to experience a franchise fee, which they hadn't had as long as it was constructed, they didn't want it to be overwhelming. So they were going to take that $30,000 out of the construction, the 250000 construction fund money that came back. Okay. <clears throat> um, but the additional 20000 was supposed to come directly from Time Warner. And your request was, we're happy to give you money for capital expenses mm -hmm. if you submit a list of equipment that you need. 
So okay. we were required to do that, right. um, and we did that. Okay. We, we submitted a very detailed list. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know whatever happened with that. My understanding so is you that- So you never got the equipment, you never got the money. Exactly. And I don't know <clears throat> what the process is to request it. Okay. And now, you know, yeah, we'll Andrew, can I just, I don't mean to interrupt again. I just want to let you know that the broadcast is out again. Okay, go ahead. So we may need to meet with that. Yeah, and that's what, obviously that's what the capital expenditure is for. Anyway. And what they do is they give us a list of equipment and then uh, we give you yeah. a purchase. Uh, the, the other thing is that we, um, we also discussed the fact that legally we're entitled to three jobs. Now, at this point, we have one public, you know, ideally there's, in a big community, you can use three channels, one for government programming, one for educational programming, and one for public mm -hmm. television programming, for community programming. Um, we've been able to fill up our one channel. Okay. But we had great hopes that we would have a second education channel, and programming would come from the Central School District, the okay. high school, the uh, SUNY, right. where we have that all coordinated. And um, Brenda had also promised us that when we were ready, we would be entitled to the third channel. So I'm bringing this up because I think that it, it needs to be made public. I'm not saying that we have enough programming right now to fill up more than our first channel. If I may, I'll tell you how it works. You're, you're entitled to a maximum of three. You have a public channel, and then you generally share the government education of the channel. Mm -hmm. And the Public Service Commission rules are when you get a certain amount of programming on the public and educational, then you split them. You get a third channel, which could be the governmental and the educational stakeholder, so vice versa. So that's kind of how the rules work in terms of getting the third channel is predicated on enough programming on the second channel. Yes, I understand that. Now we actually have a second channel, okay. which um, currently, prior to the, in the previous agreement, um, it was leased to SUNY New Pulse for their use. Okay. But at the end, when this new agreement took effect, that lease was supposed to terminate thing. Okay. Terminate, and that channel was supposed to become the town. And town the channel. Yeah, okay. so I'm, I'm just bringing that up, that up. I'm not saying that we need that channel now, but I don't think any of those things happen. Now, is that written into the agreement? Do you know, or was that just an, uh, a conversation? Uh, these are conversations. There's, uh, writing, conversations. There's, writing, there's, writing, there's writing emails with Brenda's name. Okay, that helps. That helps. So Absolutely. we do have that. That helps. Um, we were also, we were also promised two additional modulators so that we could broadcast live from five places. Uh, two would be for future education programming. Okay. SUNY already has one. The high school wanted, um, so that they can broadcast their meetings, et cetera, live. Um, one at Town Hall, one at Village Hall, and one here at the Community Center. And at this point, we currently have one at SUNY that's used for the French, the, the least channel. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the one at Town Hall, maybe that was moved it's, it's, here? It's here, we moved it here. We moved here. Yes, that's why we broadcast. But in the future, when we have a new Town Hall location, we will need that additional modulator. Okay. I mean, it's a matter of, we only are using one channel, so there's a lot of coordination that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. to get, you know, we can't have live broadcasts right. everywhere at once. But, you know, I just wanted to bring it up. Okay. Um, and I think, I think I covered everything that I okay. feel about. Andrew, I just, I just want to tell you that when we did make the move over here, that we worked very closely with Time Warner yeah. to, um, um, do the equipment in a way so we could start broadcasting live from here. And I think and I think actually from almost from the very beginning we have, you know, we even had to work out where we could put the equipment in a closet and keep it protected. So that was part of our transitioning, um, to, you know, into this building for town meetings. Yeah. And, and, and that's been great. I mean, it's been working great. Uh, I, I think the, of all the things I listed, I think the only thing I would, I really would personally change is the way that we're going to spend money for is there a coordinator on the impact channel here? Yeah, actually, we do. The person, um, the company that we, the people that we use that broadcast our stuff live, they also get a stipend to um, actually coordinate the programming for um, for the channel. Okay. So we do have a program. We having we have a program coordinator that we pay. Prepared list of equipment. Uh, Representative Brenda, 
representative from the company, from the program, the program coordinator himself. Oh, okay, fine. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. We got that one. Okay, great. And he'll update the list. I mean, it was, yeah, you know, it was an estimated list. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, but anyway, so in, in most cases, prices will come down. Yeah. But anyway, we can work together. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, if, um, are there other people who want to speak or ask questions? Sure, come up here. Hi, my name is Ann Berkeley, and I want to speak from the consumer. Sure. Because I find your bills to be very disturbing. <laughs> 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 That's the very first time I've heard that. The, well, but You're being sarcastic? You heard Tom <laughs> 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 okay, Francesca. And I've read the Mm -hmm. The contract it's three and a half percent, and I cannot come up with three and a half percent of my bill, and I'm really good at numbers. Okay. <laughs> and I can't figure out where that number is coming because it changes from month to month. My bill is not. Okay. So where is that coming? Well, first thing I'll do is I'll look at what is the gross revenue definition, which is the basis on which the fee is calculated, and there are a number of different definitions depending on what the municipality wants that would change the structure of the franchise fee. For instance, if you had all recurring revenue as the basis of the fee, that would be something that is on the customer's bill every month. Basic cable, standard cable, HBO, it wouldn't include pay-per-view movies, it would not include home shopping network, it would not include media advertising sales. There are others that include everything except shopping channel and, home and uh, advertising sales. If you buy a movie and the, and the movies are in the definition, then that would change your uh, your franchise fee from month to month. But if your bill is the same every month, the franchise fee ought to be the same every month as well. Because I'm pretty good with numbers too. I agree. And, and I so, think I should be able to take my starter TV, which is $18.90, and multiply it by 3.95%, three, 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 four, four, and that should be my franchise fee. Absolutely. And it is not. What's it called? It is not. It's, I don't have it written down here, but it's less than my pay. And there for a while I thought, well, maybe I'm paying on the broadcast TV surcharge, which is when you were having difficulties with CBS, and right. we ended up getting a charge for your That's agreement good. with CBS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And still, it still doesn't add up. Okay. It's still too much. What is your address, Ann? 146 North Pot Corner Square. North? Pot. P-U-T-T. -T. Oh, Pot, like in North. Yeah. Pot, Pot Corners Road? Yeah. I will pull your bill up tomorrow and take a look at it. And if I can't figure it out, then I'll get a translator who's really good at billing to figure it out. Um, and I'll have to look and see if it includes fee on fee as part of the calculation, because that'll change the calculation. Fee on fee is a, just to explain it real quickly, it's a very weird calculation. What it means is this. Ron Saul is a store in Binghamton that sells suits. The suit's 100 bucks and the sales tax is eight bucks. I pay him $108. Under the fee on fee, the $8 I pay in tax goes back into the calculation, and I pay him $108.64 because fee on fee is included. Oh, no. And it's and it, it's kind of moment because you would never take the tax, put the tax back in and tax it again. But that, under the rules, is what we have to do with a fee on fee because we lost some, some uh, high profile losses on that. So if fee on fee is included, the amount of your franchise fee is going back in and then being recalculated another 3.5%. I don't know that for a fact. I'll, I'll look and find out for you. Right. And give me your phone number, so I'll call you if you talk about it on the phone. Well, I'll tell you after. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted mm -hmm. to talk to you about is recently I had to call again because my bill changed. Okay. And when I took a look and I gave a telephone call, mm -hmm. they told me, oh, the promotion ended. Okay. So your one promotion ended and your bill changed. And I said, why isn't that written on my bill the month before? Well, to give you some that your promotion, promotion is promotion. changing and give us a heads up as to what's going on instead of all oh. of a sudden you've got a new bill with a new amount. If your promotion is going to change, that means we know it's going to change. So that's a but very if good thought. But it's expiring, if it's terminating, why isn't that well, on my bill saying next month this promotion is over, you will be charged this amount? My point is we track that obviously very closely, otherwise we wouldn't know enough to change it the following month. So I don't see why we couldn't alert you that beginning with your next bill, your current promotion will expire. That's pretty simple. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on our bills, you know, which are kind of like things. Most of it is required, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think it's great idea. Really? All right, that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Sure. Go ahead. Wait, 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 Okay. We have to, Anna, are you done? Okay. So um, if it's okay, if some other people can get a chance to talk, then you could do it, Andrea. But then I just want you to come up so you can be by the microphone so it could be, okay, it's just that, who, you know, let other people have a chance to. Yanni, the last people in New Pulse without cable. Mm -hmm. This is it. Hello again. Hello. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm Yanni Solomon. We have a farm, Tree uh, Fontaine Earth Farm, Fort Jenkins Road, uh, New Pulse. And I, this has already been discussed, so I don't know if this is a new point, um, trying to get cable there. I understand that, Susan, you have a letter that you have to give him. I already letter. gave it to him. He already yeah. has it. Then we're all set. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there, can you give him your number and he can forward to you a date? So. He's got, he, uh, Yanni will get the date and he'll, they'll contact you and they'll let you know. We'll, and Susan will follow up too. We'll get a date. Well, hold on. We'll, 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 we'll ask for you after. David, is it unfair to ask you for a date? Or? But how long it's going to take for these people now that you have the letter oh, authorizing uh, okay. the... Uh... Well, let me explain what the process is and explain to you okay. while we're on the hallway. Okay. What we will do is I will go right to the construction department, and they will. the first thing they do is apply for the pole licenses. Those poles are owned either by the phone company, the power company, or jointly owned. What they do is they will do what they call a make ready right. They will take usually someone who's close to retirement and look up for work for them, and they will go out and they look at every pole. There are certain criteria on the pole. The phone has to be a certain height off the ground. We have to be 20 inches above the phone. We have to be 40 inches below power. That's obviously a safety consideration. So if there is not that room on the pole for us to attach, the first thing they try to do is lower the phone. It's called make ready cups. So we're making the pole ready for attachment. You can lower phone providing you still have your minimum clearance. If you can't lower phone because they're already at their lowest clearance, you have to raise power, providing there's room on the pole. If there's not room on the pole to raise power, it all goes out, we pay to have a new pole put in. So they go pole by pole, they come back to us and say, here's the make ready cost, which we must pay for in advance, which we do. They then have 60 days to commence the make ready work. Once they get the make ready work done, they give us the license to attach to the pole. And what I tell everybody, the construction is the fastest part of the whole process. I think it was about mile one, yeah, and something, and maybe less. That will take us less than three days to actually build it. It may take us three months to get the, get the licenses from the utilities. Uh, so if anybody here on the board happens to be friendly with somebody who works for the local utilities, once we find out who they are, uh, sometimes you can you have a friend. We know some laughing, we urge them. You have a friend. I, I, it's, I don't have any friends. It's just that we um, <laughs> probably don't. Um, but anyway, I have a couple. Um, what was I going to say? It's just that when we had to move out of our town hall to a temporary site, um, a lot. Of, we tried to get people out of a building very quickly because people were very sick, yeah. and um, a lot of it came down at the last minute to the electricity and the needs for extensive electricity, much more than they thought when we started. And so they worked really hard with us. They put extra people on staff to just be there like 24-7 to do what had to be done. They were wonderful to us to get us into that new building. So that's why Jeff is laughing and saying I have friends there because <laughs> Stacy, the building inspector, and I worked really hard, <laughs> you know, and they sort of knew and so. Um, yeah, I'll Maybe talk to Chris the construction can... guys tomorrow, and, and they, they know the area, so right. he may tell me, you know what, we got a good pole line there, just by looking mm -hmm. at it, looking at it okay. and taking it out, which means you probably won't mm -hmm. have any problem at all getting the license. Uh -huh. That's the that's one okay. As soon as we get the license, we go. So can you do me a favor? Would it be a, big, would it be a problem to call Yanni and yeah, just let yeah, and just give him an update so he can give the neighbors an update sure. on how long you think this is going to take yeah. so they have a sense? Well, you have to give me an estimate, but you okay. have a clean pole line. I mean, we'll, we'll submit the PA, that's just a uh -huh. technical process. It goes to the bean counters, it can sometimes be mm -hmm. bean counters. You know, mm -hmm. And then they approve it, the PA is issued, and as soon as we get the licenses, we go. Okay. So this could be by the end of the summer, at least, it would be capable. I hope so. Yeah. And again, if you get a good clean pole line, you can license, because this is a big record, construction takes no time. You know, I'll just have to tell you a funny, quick little story. When 
I don't remember if it was the last time I was supervisor back, you know, whatever. It might have been, I can't remember, it doesn't matter. We had somebody who was waiting, trying to get cable. And they came to every single meeting for like months and months and months because they were trying to wait to get cable. I don't know if you remember, Ira. And we were laughing because we said to them at a certain point when we were going to get the cable, we said, we're not hooking it up because you're going to stop coming to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> they used to come to the meetings all the time. They didn't have cable. So they came to our meetings. And once they got the cable, it was like they didn't have to come anymore. <laughs> so we got used to having them there at every meeting. We enjoyed having them there. They were very nice people. But uh, you haven't been coming to our meetings, so we don't care. We'll get you the cable as quick as possible. <laughs> Okay, great. Is there other questions, other people who have? Can you have to, if you can come up? Was there a number we could call to follow up on that, or that Yanni could call? Well, did they already, he has Yanni's number, and he said he was going to call Yanni to follow up, and then we're going to let Yanni report yeah. back to all of you. So you guys will have to call him, because he's going to be the one who knows the information. Okay? I travel a lot, so if you get something that says I'm out of town, um, I'll get back to you as quick as I can, because I do have a pretty... 637 Municipality, Central New York, Hudson Valley, uh, Capital District in Northern Jersey. So I'm stretched a bit. Is there anybody else done? If, can you just go up to the microphone? Sure. Can you still come forward? Yeah, nice to see you. My pleasure. Face to face. Well, Andrea covered much of the material I've been covered, so I'd be uncharacteristically brief. And, uh, I look forward to working with you on the town board. Um, I'm going to give you the address of uh, a senior who uh, called me. Okay. Um, her husband passed, and when they went to bill change, uh, the discount was, was uh, discontinued. We got the end of it. What's the name of the address? Well, I put it down. I'll just give it to her. Oh, okay. Broadcasting her. Information over. Okay, not that her husband dies. We got an insult injury. Anything else? And you've heard a lot about the senior discount. Um, yeah. Do you know the concept of Catch-22? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in it most of the time. Well, we appreciate the positive change that's happened since you've been on, on board. And time where, from what I'm hearing, has been more responsive, and we appreciate that. But there was this, this dark time. Mm -hmm. And during this dark time, many seniors who were eligible either lost their discounts okay. or were denied it. So there's this period of years where people were eligible for something and either have it discontinued or we're not able to participate. And that's the that's the catch twenty two. Mm -hmm. And those people are now being told forever that they're no longer eligible because, because it wasn't doing us. So I, I think um, we should be able to go back. Well it's funny because Carol also sent uh, Don she said, Can we get a list of people that had the discount and can they get the people their discount back? If you can get me a list, I can go back. No, she's asking who. She was ask, actually asking if we can get a list from you guys of the people that had discounts, and can they get the people their discounts back? So, so, so Carol's asking, Carol, and I think it's the same thing Don's asking. Well, I know we, is, can, we, we can certainly call the poor subscribers in the town of your boss. I don't know. What we do is we normally do everything by code. The codes are by, and you can, you can search by any code you want. You can search by, where are the people in the town of your boss that have HBO? Because there's a code for it. But if they don't have the code on there for the discount, we can search the discount and tell everybody who's got it. I don't know if the records would maintain the code once it's gone. So you can search by give me everyone who used to have the senior discount to the town of Newpost. The there, the computer has everything you grab. Well, I, I anticipated that that would be difficult for you to do. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, and we're talking about going back here. So I, I think a, a workable solution and one that I, I really think would solve the problem and, and prevent some goodwill from Time Warner would be a 60-day open enrollment program uh, period. Obamacare. Um, <laughs> where seniors who could, could apply to this discount okay. if they couldn't pay the long-time residents okay. and, and there was no disproof or any problem that they would receive that discount because there's this whole black hole of people and there's no way to restore them to the, to the status they should be in without, without doing something like that. Well, it, and, it, and again, if I can, if I can have, talk to the people, so how far back do our records go? How can we go back, for instance, and look at somebody's record? Uh, they went, was in the new phones. Go back and look at my record for the last year and say, well, geez, in 2012, he had the senior discount. In 2014 and 15, he didn't. We can certainly go look at that specific case if indeed we can go back and look. Uh, and again, I, I don't know I can pull by code, but if we can at least get some, some names from people said, look, I used to have the discount, I lost it, mm -hmm. I'll be happy to go to bad form and, and go back and search the accounts. And, so let's put a note on the Either that or just say, look, mm -hmm. go with the honor system. How many can there possibly be? You know, and we just 
Done, done, done. Can do it with the hand, do it in the half hour okay. I just want to I just want to be clear what he was agreeing what you were asking what he was agreeing to because I didn't get it. Yeah. So I just wanted to have clarity. Okay. That's all. Okay. okay. That's About the scene of this count. Okay. Let's, let's make sure that plan is okay. known to people within thirty days of time. Mm -hmm. okay. that's, that's reasonable and doable. Okay. Um, I was on the uh, public access committee of the Vulcan area mm -hmm. um, and um, so I want to address the modulator for Newport High School. Okay. Uh, that's something that um, built they will come. Okay. I can use that. There is a, an agreement in place in inter-municipal, inter, I don't know, between SUNY and, and uh, Central School just to administer that second channel. Do we have connectivity now with the school, do you know? Yeah. No. Oh, no. There's, there's, I, I don't know whether there's cable there. I don't think so. Well, it's just, I just, I don't, I can't answer that. I just know that they don't broadcast the meetings live. Well, you need to modulate it. But certainly, we'd like to have at least co-ass there, and preferably fiber. They use cable. They have cable. There's no fiber. There's no fiber out there. What's the school? What's it called? New High School? Central High School. Central School District. Thank you. I should know that, right? Yeah, where's the location? Central School District. Central School District. Central School District. South Park Corners. There's only one road in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we can search by location, so I, I can call up the road yeah. and go right down and look at it. Nice. See, get the schools account, pull it out, and see what they have. Yeah, and I'll talk to my technical folks and ask them if they have any knowledge of the place. The time order has a requirement for establishing a second channel. If you document the first channel is being used, I think it's for a period of 90 days. We did document that. Okay. And we satisfy the requirement for the second channel. Okay. All right. And we can speak with SUNY, and they were, they were comfortable in working with the school district. So this is something that was set up, and we're ready to go. We'll get a little trigger on that. That would be great. Okay. Um, and I'll go back to the front of the And turning from this direction to that direction, uh, I, I, as I said, I was fully working with you on the village board. I'd like to see if we can get some better communication with regard to public access. Um, the village clerk uh, wasn't aware at the time when it was coming tonight. Um, I just had to read it in the paper. So, we could get some sort of a you know, joint body or you know, return to a public access committee or something. That's just a goal that we can talk about in the future. She could sign up for the alerts. I thought she was on them. I think she's on the alerts, yeah. isn't she? So. Well, it's on our website. I mean, it's been publicized. You get it automatically. You automatically get the agenda. So I yeah. thought she was on it, but if Katie's not on it, um, Right, but I, yeah, but I think she, she said did. she thought that he's saying he yeah. thought she was already so on the alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Improving communications. And uh, thank you so much. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, is there anybody else before Andrea comes back and explains? Nobody else has anything? Okay, Andrea, if you want to. Just want to read the definition for me, Andrea? Yeah, but it's basically just to answer Andrew, what I understand. Um, gross the franchise fee is based on gross revenues. So it, it's not particular for your bill. It's based on gross revenues for all the subscribers and it, and it includes uh, revenues derived from provision of cable service, but also local advertising, leased access programming, and home shopping. Okay. And there is a fee on a fee. Okay. All so right. it's going to be hard. I mean, you can put it the baseline, but there's always going to be additional. And it's going to vary from month to month based on how much home shopping was sold. Yeah, um, well, what we can do is I will look at your bill and I'll give you a follow up. I'll give you a right down through it and then we have a factor. Here is what you're being charged for your services. Here is what you're being charged for home shopping. Here's what you're being charged for media sales. And then factor in the, the fee on fee. Here's what that number is. And it's going to come up to your exact bill with all those factors included. There's no way we can determine what that is. I think once I go through it with you, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. How would I know what the home shopping and those values are? It should be listed right in the bill. On my bill? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't think 
think I've ever seen that. There should be one extra line on there for home shopping and uh, advertising sales. Thanks. Okay. My understanding is that it isn't, I mean, her franchisee. Each franchise fee percentage so is assessed against each individual okay. building. So someone who has a lot more services is paying the same percentage yeah. of more money because it's based on that individual building. Right, but I didn't think it was based on her home shopping purchases. No, it is not. That's based on home shopping sales. What we do is we do Can you guys, can you keep it down, please? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Is there anybody else who would like to speak or ask a question? I'd just like sure. to register a service complaint. It's probably unique, unique to me, so I'm, um, I'm forced to stay home. Uh -huh. Time Warner has a policy that if you're on a channel too long, I just need not, I just need for there not to be other conversations going on because it's hard. Bill, Laura, Anne, we can't hear with other conversations going on, okay? Thanks. They cut you off from the channel, and you're going to be starting. The way my love works, it's always a very crucial point. You know, yeah, it's just ready to put somebody out a window or something like that. And you know, when I call them, they tell them, they tell them just the way it is, they go, well, the building is the converters more energy efficient. Sometimes people fall asleep, the TV set is on all night. So what happens after two hours, if you have not touched the handheld or done anything with the converter, the converter is going to shut off. Your TV will stay on, it'll say uh, no signal. So what you have to do, it will pop up and it'll give you a warning. It'll say, oh yeah, warning. It happened to me yesterday, I was in the office, I had Fox News on. And the warning came up and said, okay, hit any button. Just touch a button and you have another two hours. You know, the dad, it cuts you all up and then it says to get back on and do this and that and the other thing. I'm just saying, you know, I personally like, you know, nothing you can do about it. I just find it very, yeah, it's very big. Energy efficient world. Okay. Okay, so um, if nobody has any other questions, we need to, we have some work we have to get thank, done. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for your... Have a wonderful week. Enjoy it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. It's been a supreme pleasure. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. okay. I know that I got an email from a community member who had wanted to speak at public comment. They, well, they can speak at the end of the meeting at public well, comment. He, the community member specifically said that he wouldn't be able to wait the whole time, and usually I'm public sorry, comment no. is the nope. beginning of the sorry. meeting. What's the next thing? Because you know what? Last time I broke, broke, I, I changed what I wanted to do. Our meeting ended up deteriorating because somebody was here just to, you know, we have, we have a little. I mean, he just has a community question. How many people, how many people are here to speak for, during public comment? But I can wait too. I'm, okay. I'm just. Um, so it's that's it, right? Okay. Fine. I, even though I said I wouldn't do it, go ahead, Mark, please. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just that every time we break our rules, we're sorry. But go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. Not tonight. I'll do the best I can. Um, if you can I, do, can you just go there because yes. of the microphone? This one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Mark Sherman. I live. Uh, um, I'm, I'm speaking as a, as a, on my own, not part of a committee that deals with traffic issues. And uh, one of the things we've been concerned about is there's a major project scheduled for um, South Park Corners Road, you may know about, which is on the bike lanes and so on. And one of the things that we asked for, that I asked for, several people asked for, was for a right turn lane going from South Park Corners Road onto 299, because it can really back up there. And it should have been a right turn lane when it was first done many years ago. The uh, county said they would do it. I have something in writing here from a meeting that someone attended, Bill Weinstein, saying the project will install a right turn lane from South Park Corners Road onto Main Street, which I think will be great once it's done. I think it will just make life a lot easier, especially with Hampton Inn coming in. All I'm asking is for the town board, as our representatives, to find out if this is what's happening here and to keep its eye on this project and try very hard on behalf of the community, and I'm saying this as a private citizen who uses that road, I know I'm not the only one, because there are big traffic jams, to just make sure that they do this for the good of the community. Right now, 
If one person wants to go across 299, you can have a line of six or seven cars waiting to make a right. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Um, I agree with you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mark. Um, I there's somebody else who wanted to speak, oh, no, I think. No, no, I didn't realize that you said Did, uh, <laughs> Didn't you want to speak? Is there anybody else? I thought you wanted to speak also, no? Oh, we know. Yeah. Okay, okay, so Ira, and then we're going to move on to... Yes, thank you. Can you just... I hate to ask you to have to walk up to the microphone thank again, you. but... It's good exercise. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Watching the time on the Ira, 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 if you want to sit down at the... I had uh, intended to come to this meeting before I knew about Time Warner because I saw something a few weeks ago, whatever it was, in regards to a meeting that really bothered and disturbed me. I don't watch the meetings on Access TV. It doesn't come in well, and I can't hear, I can't see it. But what I saw going on at that meeting really dis dismayed me and really got me upset as a human being. Um, people can disagree. Um, there are two points to what I always say. There's three sides to every story. Yours and mine and what's after. Uh, people were, were attacking and Calling the, you know, it, it was a disgusting thing to watch. What I saw, because I only caught the tail end as I was, uh, and I was thinking, this has been going on, this has been getting worse and worse and worse within the town of New Paltz over the last few years. When I first came here 25 years ago, maybe I was naive, but it was pleasant, you know. <laughs> I didn't come to many meetings, you know, you know, there wasn't, you know, but there wasn't this hatred, or what I consider hatred, and bullying that is going on now. It seems to come out worse when there's some kind of election or whatever going on. Unfortunately, due to social media, there are a number of what I consider hate and bullying sites that cater to this, and foster this, and uh, generate this. As I said, one of the hate sites has 2,315 members, and the I Love Blue Paul's nice site's got 213. <laughs> so that should give you an idea. But what bothers me even more, and I want to talk to the uh, candidates running for the school board about this, but they kind of got the room. People have every right to express their opinion. You know, it's free speech. That was a government now allows it was free speech. But when you are someone in power or someone who belongs to a, a group or a commission or whatever that oversees other things and you are followed because you are known who you are and everything else. The fact that you say, well, I'm speaking for myself, and you're right, and you've got that right. But with that right, if you are a quote-unquote community leader or so-called pillar or whatever, comes responsibility, all right? What do you think, you know, the schools complain about bullying and harassment and all this other stuff. What do you think happens, or what do you think sets in the minds of these children when they see this, 
and they see the people doing this, getting away with, with impunity, and getting their way by attacking, bullying, making nasty comments, making innuendos, or whatever. I think it's a sorry, sorry state that people in so-called important positions or positions that affect what goes on can't find another way to express themselves other than bullying or other than attacking or other than nasty comments. I mean, I know I, I blow my top a lot, but never on a personal attack unless I'm attacked first. And what I saw, a group of people came in here just to attack. You're entitled to your opinion. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But like, again, if you are someone who is a leader or whatever you want to call it in the community, you have a responsibility, more so than your free speech, to exercise that free speech and understand the consequences you have, particularly to the students in school who see this and then follow it in, well, you know, John didn't give me the basketball, I'm going to punch him in the mouth and yell at the ball. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to come here tonight. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Okay. Um, so I have um, some announcements. I have one very exciting announcement that I'm very excited about. Um, first, I just want to announce that the pool is open on weekends now. If you go to our website again, the dates and rates are available on the website. And um, just like last year, the community owes Jeff Logan, Deputy Supervisor, a great thank, thank you. Chris Marks, please. Oh, and Chris Marks, I'm sorry. Chris, Chris I didn't mean to. There. Chris, oh, Chris and, Chris and um, Jeff, once again, there were some issues with the pool that were going to stop it from being able to be opened. But Chris and Jeff, once again, spent nights, mornings, weekends, making sure the pool was open for the community um, in time for everybody to be able to take advantage of the pool with this hot weather. So, Chris. Jeff, thank, thank you, you once again on thank behalf you. of the community. And if you guys go to our website, um, again, the dates and the rates are available on the web. Um, I also got a um, letter from uh, Senator Bonasek, and it was just a letter congratulating, he calls me Sue, dear Sue, congratulations to the town of New Paltz on securing $350,000, which will be shared with the village of New Paltz from the New York Rising Community Reconstruction Program of the Governor's Office for Storm Recovery. The reconstruction on the Springtown Road Springtown Road Rail Trail will certainly be a benefit to the community. I'm pleased that we were successful in working with the current administration to secure this funding. If there's anything I can do to assist, please do not hesitate. So we all know that the governor did the New York Rising. We got $6 million. The town and the village worked together cooperatively. We got $6 million together. The first project that's in process right now, and um, all the legal work is being done and stuff, is the Springtown Road Bridge, Rail Trail Bridge is going to be worked on to be secured so they could be accessed through um, with emergency vehicles. And that's happening right now. We're doing all the paperwork. We're signing everything. There'll be a secret process, and they're hoping to get started very soon. So I got a congratulations for the town, from the senator. Um, we all know um, this is, well, you might not know, but this is, sen old, um, what is it, senior? It is, um, May is Older Americans Month, America's Month. Um, now, if you all know, at the beginning of this year, we hired for the first time a senior coordinator. We felt that um, the seniors have a lot of needs, and sometimes their issues aren't addressed really that well, and they've spent a lot of time paying taxes and raising families, and now here they are, and some of them are alone. So this board, um, I put into the budget, and the board supported a senior advisor, a senior coordinator, that we hired, Kathy Puglisi, who came to us with extensive experience from Office for the Aging at the county. And since Kathy's been here, she has helped several residents, connecting them to services for caretakers, for people with needs, people who need food, people who have medical issues, who they need to call for case managers, how to get them in touch with Office for the Aging, for the Jewish Federation Services, for Family of New Paul's. People who are very, very overwhelmed and have nobody. So we have Kathy, they've been calling her. Um, she's gotten a lot of people, a lot of help, so it's been a great position and we're really happy about it. And two things that we're doing through the senior committee is this um, Sunday, if the seniors are, um, I should have announced it while everybody was here for the time I wanted thing, because everybody <laughs> cared about their senior discount, okay? But this Sunday, actually from two to four here, we're having a senior ball, and it's called Turn Back the Clock. In honor of Old Americans Month, we're gonna have live entertainment, refreshment, games, and prizes. And so it will be from two to four here for seniors. We're having a senior ball. 
There will be food. Um, the Pigler class is helping. They're going to be making um, food. They're going to be here helping to serve. It should be a really nice event. And if um, you want to come, please call 707-2909. That's Gabriel Keefe, Gabriella Keefe, or Leah Jones at 701-3737. I'll say those numbers again. 707-2909 or 701-3737. And please, if you want to come ours for me tomorrow because we're ordering the food um, and the platters so we know how much that we need. So we hope to see you all on Sunday at 2 o'clock. And also the senior, um, we have a wonderful group of seniors who are working together on a senior committee, working with Kathy. And so we will be releasing on Sunday. It's at PDQ right now. We're going to be releasing a senior directory that has all the resources in New Paltz for seniors, really for all of Ulster County, but so seniors know if they need to go to a doctor, if they need, you know, like any kind of help, um, you know, where and how to get the resources they need. So we will be putting out the senior directory on Sunday. We'll be handing it out, and then we'll be making it available to doctors, dentists, different people who serve seniors in the community. Um, and Carol's probably sending me um, another note to tell me something. <laughs> um, because uh, she always keeps me on track. Let's just see if she wants to tell me something. Um, not her. Okay. So anyway, so um, that's Sunday. We'll be handing out that, bro that booklet, and then we'll start getting it all around. And so that's the seniors. Okay. And the last announcement, unless anybody else has, is I have some really good news. And everybody knows about a month ago, the governor had announced... Um, that he was doing a competition for microgrids and asking communities to um, apply for $100,000 to do a plan for a microgrid project for our community. And we, the board authorized me to work on it, and then we authorized Jason, um, the mayor at the time, to work on it. I got the school board, I went to a school board meeting, we got them on board, and then um, we got the college on board, we got Woodland Pond on board, we got the DEC on board, we got um, the um, Central Hudson on board. We got the DEC on board, the police, the fire, rescue. Um, let me see who else. Um, we're going to be including some of the supermarkets. We're going to be including some of the pharmacies. We're including the sewer plant. We're including all the water pumps. We're including all the sewer pumps. And so we put together an application, and we were also really fortunate that we were able to reach out to the Microgrid Institute, um, the National Microgrid Institute. They're the only national nonprofit that does microgrids. They joined us. They took the lead. They did the application. They brought in um, Green Energy Corporation, who's done probably the biggest and best microgrid out in San Diego. They became a partner. They also brought in Hitachi to do some other kind of work. And we worked over a period of four-week time. We had an incredible team of representatives. And we put together a microgrid application that, in essence, would pretty much go from South Park Corners down to basically the bridge and um, to create a clean energy micro grid. So in emergencies, when we lose power because of storms or any other kind of thing, the town will actually, and village will have power. And we thought originally we were starting with a small micro grid around the village, but we were able to, then we were gonna do another micro grid on um, South Park Corners and go up and down there. But we were able to com com combine it to do a complete micro grid. And we put the application in two weeks ago and we just got notified by NYSERDA that we got the $100,000 grant. And so we will be working with, um, with um, with Microgrid Institute, to we'll, the contracts are getting in place right now, and then we'll start working on the actual plan um, that we will then have to submit to the state. So, hopeful. Susan, nice job. Thank you very much. Yeah. I actually do get some stuff done. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, have fun implementing this done for next year. <laughs> um, so anyway, so we got them. We did. We just got notified um, yesterday morning that we got the hundred thousand um, dollars. Microgrid Institute, we got the letter on behalf of the New Paltz Microgrid Project Team. I'm delighted to submit the Stage 1 proposal, and um, we, it's a private um, public collaboration, and on and on and on, and we got the announcement, and so the contract should be coming through soon, and then we'll start to implement actually putting together the plan. And then we'll put in the plan, and if we should um, win the next round, which I feel really, really confident with the partners that we have, that I see no way that this is not going to be a reality, um, the next phase is we would get a million dollars to actually do the, um, to do the, uh, this is the first phase is a plan. The second phase would be a million dollars to actually do the design. And then the third phase would be $5 million to actually build it out. And so I'm really 
happy to be announcing this, and I'll let all our team members know tomorrow that we ended up getting accepted. So that's um, really good news, and it's a great thing for New Paltz, even when this should happen. So I don't know if there's any other announcements before we get into the meat and potatoes of the meeting. Uh, just a quick oh. question. Um, is the town submitting an efficiency plan on the first? Yes. Um, as a matter of fact, the efficiency plan is already submitted. It was submitted at 4 o'clock today. Um, what Dan is asking about is under the cap and, um, and now the freeze, where the governor put in the freeze, you have to stay below the cap, but you also have to show that you had savings of a certain percentage um, in order to then apply for the freeze, the cap, and then our residents, once we are cap compliant and freeze compliant, um, the residents next year will start to get rebates back um, you know, from the state. And so we basically had to, under the formula, show a savings of $70,000 a year going out you know, for, you know, going out for a period of time. Um, we worked really, I worked really hard and so did County Executive Hine. They originally, when they were gonna do this freeze, were gonna be just going forward. So in other words, whatever savings you had from 215 going forward, you would be able to then claim. But we spent a lot of time as a town board when we first came in to already do what the governor was looking for, which was to do savings and do mergers. And so we did a, um, worked with Chris Marks when we lost our um, building grounds guy, and we didn't replace him. We brought in Chris and gave Chris a stipend, and he now does building grounds and highway. Um, and we did a number of other things over the period of time. So we actually saved a quarter of a million dollars um, in 20, 13, in our 2013 budget, we had a quarter million dollar savings for what we did. So I worked really hard, and I know County Executive Hine worked really hard to get the state to let us to go back and get credit for what we did starting in 2013 when they implemented the cap and stuff and said it's not fair. We've already done the work, you know, to, to you know, benefit from this, and now you're asking us to first go forward and do more work. So when they drafted the freeze and the cap, they did it in a way where they let you go back. So we just filed it today. We showed... Now, under the thing we're supposed to show 70,000 in savings, we showed $250,000 in savings for 2013. Then we showed, I think, close to 300,000 savings because you can just keep moving forward. A little bit more. Um, was a little, bit more. a little bit more. I didn't bring the numbers tonight, you know, actually, uh, Carol. Bring it so um, it was like over 300,000 for the next year. Then it moved up to 350. And then we also said that we suspect that we'll be getting more savings going forward because Chris has some ideas of how he'd like to. Um, you know, basically try to save some more money, and there's some other things that we'll talk about and support. So we did file it at 4 o'clock today. Carol hit the button, and then Carol Good. and I high-fived each other. <laughs> and, Actually, and, it, was and, a, and it was a 900, it was about a $960,000 savings that we've actually realized since right. we started. So we're just shy of a million dollars in savings without the state asking us for it. And a lot of that actually goes to Chris with his work, uh, some efficiencies we've had in his department, and that was actually one of the biggest ones. Mm -hmm. So yeah. thank you, yeah. Chris. Yeah. Please, uh, and actually, Chris, I'm sorry. Don't ask us for more money now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh, so, yeah, that, that was, again, just through that, so it was... It now, it's funny because, safe. Dan, that you ask, because actually we were prepared, we were so excited about this, mm -hmm. that we actually started checking the website before the state even had the information up. Mm -hmm. And we were calling the state to say, we want to be the first town to actually apply, because we know we have the savings, and we were hassling them to say, when are you putting this up? We want to do this. When are you putting this up? We want to do this. When are you putting it up? We want to do this. And we actually were, like, pushing them to say, can you please put the stuff up so we can apply? Then we got really busy, but you know, so we did do it, and um, we're really happy about that. So that's great. Um, Jeff, did you have something that? You uh, just uh, two items. One is uh, May 30th, which is this Saturday at 6 p.m. is our Memorial Day parade in New Paltz. Yes. It will start up at Mannheim, and then uh, it terminates down at the War Memorial down in front of the uh, firehouse down by the Village Hall. So that's 6 p.m. I encourage all to attend. Uh, and then also June 16th uh, will be possibly the final or second to final meeting for the bridge committee for the Walker River Bridge. Uh, the, uh, uh, you can go to our website and see all the material. It looks like the bridge that has been kind of consensus of uh, most of the committee and we are varied uh, members, all of us on the committee, uh, is one that's called a Cambridge Arch style bridge. It gives very open views. Uh, it is a steel bridge with a deck on it. It'll have 
Uh, it appears what we're going to be going with is a cantilevered walk on the north side of the bridge uh, with bike lanes heading both east and one in the east lane, one in the west lane. Uh, but again, I encourage anyone to attend. Uh, the consensus of the whole committee was to have them as daytime meetings. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or any of the board members. And again, that will be on June 16th at 1 p.m. in this room right here. Okay. And also just one more thing before we get to um, the actual agenda items. Um, to answer your question, um, we had gotten on Tuesday, this is answering the question about the intergovernmental <coughs> IGA between the DEP and the town. And so I had gotten a text on Tuesday around 4 o'clock that the IGA was finally done between the lawyer and between the DEP, um, and that between the DEP and the lawyer, and that they were ready, and would I be able to put it on the agenda for tonight? And it was about 4 o'clock on Tuesday, and I said, it's too late for us to put it on the agenda tonight. We haven't, no, we hadn't gotten a copy of it. Um, you know, Jeff had been working on it with them, but none of us had seen it, had a chance to read it. And then I felt that um, it was just too soon to put it on for Thursday night because we didn't have time to vet it and ask our questions and stuff. So what we're probably going to do is, at the end of tonight, is schedule a special meeting for next week or the week after, probably next week, um, that we're going to try to schedule a special meeting for the purposes of discussing the IGA and possibly voting on it that night. So that is where we're at. It just, just got finalized. We haven't seen it. And actually, no, that actually uh, that actually went out to every board member here. No, I know. Uh, at, okay, so never know. But, but that, that the copy but first, of the IGA went out to every board member, that, to yeah. our engineer, and to uh, the final copy to right. uh, both uh, Ms. Chang and Mr. Morello. Right. But all I'm saying yeah. is that it was Tuesday, yeah. and today's Thursday. It was late Tuesday, and today's Thursday. And so it was just, you know, my feeling was it was just too last minute, and I didn't want to actually. We post the agenda on Tuesday, and once it's posted, we don't add anything. We add it sitting here at the meeting, and I didn't think it was appropriate for us to add the IGA tonight at the meeting, you know, without anybody knowing that that was happening. And so, um, we, I, you know, basically said to them, "I'm not doing it, and we'll just schedule a special meeting." So that's what's going to happen. Do you want to set a special okay, meeting? Okay, we can now do it right now if you want. Sure. Do you know the status of the IMA? The IMA was signed. The IMA was approved by the town. You were here that night. The IMA was approved by the village, Correct. and so. <coughs> I informed it because I wanted to see right. it because I did not right. discuss it mm -hmm. at the village board meeting where they voted to approve mm -hmm. it. And, um, and when I checked with the village clerk, it hadn't been signed by, by Mayor West. So I don't know who mm -hmm. it, it has it has been it has been signed. Right right well, actually, what ended up happening was we did have Jason sign it right after that meeting, but I think they had to make a change on the IMA for. There was some little thing or something, so they had to change it, and it's true. All of a sudden, I was signing it, and I said, wait a second, Jason had already signed this, and um, if Jason hadn't signed it. So I think there was just some little technicality that had to be changed. And it has been signed, right? I think it's already signed now. You have it. Um, you don't have it back yet from the village? No? Okay, well, we signed it. I think the mayor signed it, but we can... We'll follow up. We'll, we'll, fo we'll follow up to see where the contract is, but it's in the village's hands. Because, you. you know... So, okay? So, um, but either way, we'll try to have a copy of it at the um, meeting that we have on the IGA. We'll bring some copies, and you don't have to foil it. We'll just make, give copies to you guys, because, okay? Okay, so, so we'll just set the meeting for uh, next Wednesday or Thursday, or? You guys tell me what's good for everybody. Um, well, Rosanna should tell us when, what's a good thing. Rosanna, what's uh... Thursdays are better. What? Yeah. Um, I can do that. Thursday the fourth. Have you got anything? I can't get my calendar. Sure. Done. Seven o'clock on Thursday. Just give me thirty seconds. I'm trying to get find my get figure out how to use this phone and get my June calendar. This is going to use analog. <laughs> really? Okay. So what, day, what would the day be? Thursday the 4th. Uh, Kevin is proposing 7 p.m. Okay. So that's okay with everybody? It's fine. 7 o'clock on the 4th? Okay. 7 p.m. June 4. And it'll be for the purposes of the IGA. There is a chance we might add some personal stuff on it. I just don't know yet. Um, but uh, so I'll figure it out and then notify the board. Okay. 
7 o'clock, June 4th. Okay? Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so the first, um, uh, first item of business tonight is, oh, Stacy's here. We have to go into executive session with Stacy. Um, well, let me just do this, if you don't mind, Stacy, waiting. You want to um, take a quick break? We, we can, or we can try to go through all these real quick. Um, okay, let's just do this. Um, as everybody knows, I would just like to do this because this is exciting also. And um, so, um, as everybody remembers, the town board um, decided that we felt that it was necessary for us to do a moratorium on dormitory projects. Um, we wanted to do a six-month moratorium for the purposes of having the planning board look at our zoning, um, look at student housing and the IDA Category 5 and the impact that it has on our community. So we had the public hearing, we closed the public hearing, and we just were waiting for public com uh, written comment, which we didn't get any, um, and we referred it to the county planning board and to the town planning board. So the town planning board said, during the April 13th, 2015 meeting of the town of Newport's planning board, it was unanimously agreed upon that the planning board supports the moratorium on dormitory projects that receive IDA benefits. The board is fully aware of the impacts on town services when there is a large increase in college students living in the town and village and the need for taxable revenue to cover the cost of these services. The planning board will be working on changes to the zoning code to address this issue and will present the results to the town board in the fall. We also got um, a letter from the, um, from the county planning board that basically said that uh, this was a, well, I guess I can read to you exactly what they said. Um, well, I don't know. They basically said that go for it. <laughs> so, with that said, um, I would like to do a resolution on the adoption of local law number number one. This is our first local law? Yes. 2015. I understand that, but this is already almost June. So, I just want to point out that we're not a town board that uh, <laughs> legislates, uh, <laughs> over legislates on the community. So, how fitting that the first local law of 2015 for the town of New Pools will be the local law number one of 2015 for a moratorium on dormitory projects. Whereas an introductory local law entitled the moratorium on dormitory projects was introduced before the town board of the town of New Pools on March 19, 2015, and upon notice duly published and posted, a public hearing was then held before the town board on April 23, 2015. And whereas the proposed local law was referred to the town planning board, which unanimously made a favorable recommendation in its April 13, 2015 meeting as reported by memorandum dated April 23, 2015. And whereas the proposed local law was referred to the Ulster County Planning Board, which found that the local law was a matter for local determination. And whereas a public discussion was heard at the after said public hearing concerning the merits and environmental significance of said introductory local law, and the public comment received by the town board was unanimously in favor of adopting the proposed local law. Now therefore be it resolved that the adoption of the introductory local law entitled Moratorium on Dormitory Projects is hereby determined to be a type two action under seeker. Be it further resolved that the introductory local law entitled Moratorium on Dormitory Projects of the Town of New Paltz be and hereby is adopted as local law number one of 2015 of the Town of New Paltz on May 28, 2015. On the motion of? So moved. And seconded by? Kevin Berry. Okay, the foregoing resolution was adopted by? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, four ayes, no nays. The supervisor declares this resolution adopted. The town clerk is directed to file and circulate this resolution required by Seeker and to report to the Ulster County Planning Board on the action taken by the board dated May 28, 2015. So, congratulations. And um, so the planning board will get to work on this. And I don't know, we had talked about um, creating a sort of committee that would work on this, that would bring in the college that um, would bring in the county, would bring in potentially even the IDA to work with us on this if they were so willing. Um, so um, I guess the planning board could try to put this committee together, and I just don't know if there's anybody from the town board who wants to work with them um, on this a local law, or? I'd be more than happy to work with Dennis and those guys. Okay, terrific, okay, thanks. So I'll let them know that you're gonna be on the committee from the town board, and that they should um, reach out to the college and um, reach out to the IDA, reach out to Dennis Doyle, and schedule their first meeting. 
Okay, great, terrific. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Kevin, for Thank offering. So what I just need to do, and I'm sorry, I don't like to do um, personnel in the middle of a meeting, but because we have Stacy here and she's on overtime, um, we need to just go in and do, a, um, an, I need a motion for an executive session to, um, for the purposes of talking about um, a personnel. personnel within the building department. And then what I think we'll do is we'll come back out We'll do the rest of the meeting, and then we're going to have to possibly do another executive session for issues relative to the highway department. But I just want to make you guys all sit here while we're in there. So we'll do Stacy's. That should only take about five minutes or so, and then we'll come back out. Okay, so do I have a motion to... Excuse me? It has to do with the um, medical situation of a particular employee. Okay. So do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you, everyone. We, it will be quick.
Can motions come out of executive session? Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to take some action based on executive session. Um, the first thing we're going to do is um, um, authorize Diane Lee, who works part-time at the clerk's office, to also do 20 hours a week on a temporary basis in the building department at her current rate to help um, help the Stacy um, with um, all the work that she has now that we have somebody out on uh, disability. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Okay, the next move that we, um, we had put into the budget a um, building inspector one at um, $16.89 and um, we did a canvas from people off of the list and um, nobody would accept the job because um, all the other towns around us are paying $21, $22.55, $22.28. Um, 1873. So we are going to re canvas for a um, building inspector one at a rate of $20.25. Do you have a second? Second. second. Oh, yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motions are carried. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. You know, while we're doing numbers, and I apologize, can I add one uh, thing right now? What? Uh, can I add a escrow? Thanks for oh, coming. Okay. Well, we're going to release Thank escrow you. through a spin whip, so we'll do it then. No, uh, what's just, okay. Yes, so we'll establish it, but we we'll do, do this okay, one. Okay, establish one now? Thank you. Well, because we're going to establish it. No, we're going to release, no, release escrow, so we'll establish it at the same time, okay? okay. Thank you. Um, SOS um, for kids. The police approved it, um, but the village hasn't. Um, at first, I thought that there were going to be some problems because of the pool closing, Memorial Day being a different date, and blah, blah, blah. Regardless, I think it's all been worked it's out between worked SOS out. Everything is fine, and everything's yeah. fine. So the police approved, the village didn't, so we'll approve it once we get it back from the right. village, okay? So we have to release escrow um, for Whispering Woods. And um, so let me just pull that out for a second. Um, so. Um, the engineer and the lawyer signed off that there's no outstanding bills, so we need to um, rebate back to Whispering Woods um, Project um, $1,111.15. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Jeff, you want to do the... Oh, um, I'd like to establish. establish the resolution, a escrow account for the Shane... Uh, Shane Development Project on North Puck Corners Road in the amount of $1,500 with a replenishment amount of $750. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Okay, and, next. I'll forward it to you. Okay. Next, we have the fire protection contract, um, contract that um, we got from the village. The um, budget that we put in, which is what we get from the village at the time, and this is a little complicated because they do their budget at a different time, we do our budget, so we have to put something in on an estimated basis and then hope when they actually do their budget, that's the number. And we do, it has a separate taxing jurisdiction, so it's a little bit of a problem. But um, so we had, um, we had put in the budget $243,158, but the actual contract is $259.39, $259,039. That's for us, okay, um, is what they're telling us our 50% would be based on the calls, 259-0393. So that's an additional, what, well, close to 15,000, it's, actually it's $15,881, um, which would be a problem because, again, we raised taxes on for a fire district independently, but um, there was money that was not expended in the fire budget in the past and so we're going to be getting a refund from the village of $22,916.47. So that will cover the um, $15,000 increase, leaving over $7,000 to go into the fund balance for the fire protection district line. So can I have somebody? Um, so moved. Second. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I just think what we have to do is um, somehow put in place um, you know, the village does this budget and we're not involved in the budget and we just get a cost and, you know, we basically have to approve it. So I do think with the new administration, if we could try to make sure that when the village fire budget's being done, that at least a representative from the town board is there to have a say okay. and bring it back to us. So, Family you know, done. we were lucky this time that, you know, we are getting this $22,000 back, mm -hmm. so we're not going to have a problem. Okay, so Rosanna, I'll sign this for you and give it to you before we leave. Um, the family of Woodstock contract, we all love family beyond comprehension. And this board has um, agreed to give family $25,000 
um, in our budget, so I would like a motion to authorize the supervisor signing the contract for so family. Moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? And uh, also, while you're on family of New Paltz, uh, this weekend uh, there is the family fun day, mm -hmm. which I believe will be uh, down at the Hesbrook Field. Yes. Uh, there'll be music, fun, they are raising money for the food pantry and family of New Paltz. I would encourage all to attend. And then when you leave that, you can go and attend the Main Memorial dance. Day Parade. And then the dance the next day. The senior dance. And then the senior, senior dance the next senior day. Ball. Big weekend in New Paltz. Big so weekend. it would be, again, a family fun day. And it will be down at the Hesburgh Park. There will be local bands, food, and Saturday fun afternoon. for all. Saturday afternoon. I have to go with my son from the wedding. Anyway. Um, okay. So we, so we, uh, we moved that, right? Mm -hmm. We voted on it. Okay, we have a contract for the summer recreation for the bus transportation. So um, we do this contract every year. We pay for the buses to take the kids to the pool when they're at the YMCA camp. And so I'd like a motion. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. Motion so carried. We also have a contract um, for the um, for the summer YMCA. The contract is just a little bit different because in the past um, we would be involved in um, doing acquisition of the space and the facility, but at this point the YMCA is going to do it directly. Um, they're going to do a um, special, they're going to just do a use permit and uh, they're just working directly with the schools. So we took that out of that part out of the contract <coughs> otherwise, and we also took out of the contract. I, there used to be a YMCA board, I know because I was on it, but um, there isn't a local board anymore. And so there was something in here that basically said that they would report to the, um, you know, the rec director, to the board, and to this committee. So we took the committee out. So those are the only changes, is that we're not involved in securing the location, and there's no summer recreation parent advisory committee. So can so I have a motion I, to? Uh, motion for a uh, supervisor to sign contracts. Second. Um, just a quick question about the right. contract. It, it, it does state that we're not picking up any of the additional expenses for the use. Right. The use part is completely taken out. Great. Just want okay. to make sure. Okay. So did I have a first second. motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion is carried. Okay. We um, talked about the, um, the yes, also got the response yeah. with the, okay. Um, do I have a motion to um, regretfully accept the resignation of Linda Donovan from our ZBA? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. Yeah. Okay. Linda's been the head of the chair of the ZBA for years and years and years and years. She's shepherded through some major projects. Um, she was the one overseeing the Hampton Inn project, hmm. and that was a long process because they knew it was gonna go to court, and it was upheld in court after court after court, and um, she's done an amazing job on behalf of the community, and so it's with regret uh, she'll be moving out of the community, and that's why she's resigning. And she did promise we had a little going away party for her, and she did promise to come down and visit us, uh -huh. and uh, we are going to be advising them up in the town. She's moving into north of Albany. She's available yes. for yeah. their ZBA. She <laughs> said no. Uh -huh. But yes, okay. uh, we want to thank Linda. A lot of the way our community looks is because of Linda's guidance on the ZBA. Right. And it is deeply appreciated. Okay. Uh, you know, while you're doing it, did you also get the prepay, though, for the server? It came in very Yes, I have it. It's in the pre I have it. You have it? Okay, I just want to make sure. It. Yeah, okay, I have good. it. Okay. Okay, so um, the next thing is um, the pavilion dedication. For years, we've talked about getting a pavilion built out at the Field of Dreams. We've talked about getting sewer for years out at the Field of Dreams. We've been working on both of them, and the pavilion was done last year at the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. Because we had the move for Town Hall, it was just too much for the board to take on doing the dedication and everything we needed to do. We did set the rates. The um, pavilion is being rented, but um, we need to do a um, dedication and um, maybe even try to plan some kind of community party out there, um, possibly, at the pavilion. Um, so what I would like to do is um, Kyle Brewer, who is the young boy who um, passed away, unfortunately, from our school district, who really embodied everything that is good about New Paltz. He was a really wonderful kid who really cared about everybody in the school district and in his community. He was there for everybody. He never had a bad word to say about anybody from what I understand. Um, he was a really amazing kid and he unfortunately passed away at too young of an age. And um, so I've sort of talked to the board members about dedicating um, the pavilion in Kyle's name. So um, everybody seemed to not have a problem with that. So we're going to dedicate it in Kyle Brewer's name 
simultaneously, um, the Bruderhof was incredibly helpful in building the pavilion. They were the ones who really um, put it all together, right, and basically built the, um, and they finished the roof. It was a lot, a lot of work. They saved us a lot of money. And um, Margaret Zimmer, Zimmerman from the Bruderhof recently died at a very early young age also. And so what we would like to do too, Chris and I talked about this, is um, in honor of what the Bruderhof did for us to do a plaque um, that will be by the pavilion or on the pavilion, Chris will try to work it out, and do a plaque thanking the Bruderhof for all the work they did on the pavilion and we'll do it in Margaret Zimmerman's name and I know that that's what the Bruderhof would like to see. So um, what I'd like the board to do is authorize Chris to basically just figure out um, the cost for doing the um, the dedication, the dedication, so, you know, the dedication um, for the pavilion, you know, the Kyle Brewer you know, Memorial Pavilion, and then also the plaque. Whatever we're going to do for, um, you know, for um, Margaret Zimmerman. I'll, I'll put a couple plaque ideas to the board. And right. Okay. Right. Okay. So I just. Uh, if I can, I just have a motion to authorize Chris to work on creating these. Uh, yes, I, I would like to move that if you have. Okay, to move it. thanks. And uh, I'd like to do a second. So, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Aye. so carried. And then when we get the um, when we have the um, the sign for Kyle Brewer and when we have the um, the plaque for um, Margaret, then what we'll do is we'll schedule a dedication out at the Field of Dreams. We have money in um, the budget for um, volunteer recognition and some other kinds of things, so maybe we can do some kind of big barbecue for the community. I think that'd be great. And we'll, um, of course, invite Kyle's, um, all of his teammates and the people from the high school and his family to be there with us in the Bruderhof to come down. And so we'll try to do a nice community nice. event, you know, and start celebrating what's... That's a great good. idea. Okay. I love it. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, so now um, we have just a conference approval for Stacy and Kelly. Um, so let me just get that out. Give me 30 seconds, guys. Um, oh, did I want to take it out? Here it is. Okay. Um, Stacy and Kelly both have to go to a commercial energy um, code conference. It's for eight credit hours as required by the state to keep their certification. So it's $100 a person and the date of the conference is 624.15. So I need a motion Hold. to... Okay. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. All motion right. so carried. And um, we have personnel again. But uh, do you want to do the prepays and do adopt the minutes? Let's do the prepays first and, we'll and then adopt the minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, excuse me? Yeah, but I think what I'd like to do is talk to you in executive session first about that before we authorize it. And I have all the minutes right here. Okay, yeah. Um, when he goes back and reads some of the stuff, he'll get upset. Because you relive the meetings when you read them. Kevin, okay, have fun. <laughs> Okay, so the prepays that we have to do. Um, the first one, we authorized this um, last year when the um, police server crashed and um, we had to get a new um, a server and we had to get a server lease. So we have to authorize $3,349.37 for the police server and if we don't do it tonight, so we'll end up being charged a late fee. Second. And just for discussion, is the initial payment off of that did come out of seized assets? Some of it did, uh, yeah. Some, yeah, and this year, uh, actually, we don't need to because we did budget for the complaint amount right. this year. Right, exactly. Uh, and we are, I know Kevin's been looking at some seized asset laws that uh -huh. changed them, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're going to be getting yeah. less than we used to. That's right. So anyway, this was put in the budget, and so, so, okay, so I have we a motion, have and I have a second, right? Yes. Okay, so that's one prepay. That was the one you were asking about? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Then I, I don't, talked to, um, no, I talked okay. to the chief and about so, it. And yeah. so um, your thing is in the um, highway thing for personnel, Chris. Um, why don't we just do this, because we don't have to do it in executive session, even though it's personnel. Um, we have all of the Morial Pool staff for 2015. Um, we always have to um, make a motion to hire these um, lifeguards. And so would somebody like to move 
So um, moved. Second. The Morial Pool staff at the rates as um, reflected in the Morial Pool staff 2015 list. So moved. So the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion so carried. And um, I don't know if you want to do the minutes now or you want to um, wait a little bit, Kevin, take it into. No, I'm good. You want to start with these? I just, there's a couple of, I just need to look at them because, uh, okay, so um, just a, uh, is it this one? Okay, um, on March 19th, 2015, on page five, there's just where it says acceptance of resignations. You just, um, in the second line, it says seconded by Kevin Barry, all I votes. You just left out an L. Oh. You have AL, so if you just want to correct ALL, -L, okay? Um, so do I have a motion to move the minutes from March 19, 2015? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Um, April 2nd, 2015, do I have a motion to move the April 2nd so, meeting? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. On April 16th, I just know. Okay, on the April sixteenth one, um, Rosanna. We're just amending the, the time of the meeting. What? The time. Well, there's, there, well, there's two um, things I want to change on that. Um, in, on page six, we just have um, in the Millbrook Preserve update. If you go into one, two, the third paragraph, you have the police contract alone was uh, two hundred sixty thousand dollars, already exceeding what we were allowed to spend under the budget cap uh, for the police retirement. So it wasn't the police retirement contract, it was the police retirement increased um, $260,000 alone. So it was a $260,000 increase. The police retirement was actually close to $400,000 or 450000 but it was a $260,000 increase, which was 30000 above what we were allowed to do under the cap, which was 230000 So just change contract to that, okay? And then on page seven, under um, where you talk about fire district, one, two, three, four, the fifth paragraph, um, where it says Supervisor Zimmett agreed um, that an invitation to the fire department for, um, for a make a presentation, it should be to make a presentation, so you just want to correct the grammar, um, to make a presentation, is a good idea. She indicated she's open to the idea but expressed concerns in regard to the fact that because fire districts have to have a cap, there's a little more, there's a little more control. So that, it, I didn't express a concern about the cap. I was saying that the reason why I don't have as much of a concern about a fire district is because they have to live under the cap now. So you just need to take out but express concern in regards to the fact, okay, and just say she indicated that she's open to the idea and that because the fire districts have a cap, okay. And then um, when we talked about me expressing concern, my only concern was that um, we always looked at a townwide village. I'm sorry, excuse me. Can, that we, um, that my, um, what I basically said was that, um, excuse me, I just need you to keep it down a little. Sorry, I just, we can't hear. Um, that um, I said that my concern was that we've been looking at a townwide village because we were always told that we didn't want to dissolve the village because we'd have a fire district. And so I was just upset about the fact that what changed, that we were now being asked to do it. So I just want you to cut that. So with those changes, um, do I have a motion to accept uh, the minutes from April 16th? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Um, okay, you just gave me them back right here. Yep. Okay. Um, April 23rd, that was a public hearing on the moratorium. Do I have a motion to so accept? Moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion so carried. Then we had the April 30th meeting, which is when we did the review of the IMA with the village water. Um, and the piglets came. And so, um, and Kevin left the meeting, Susan left the meeting, Jeff left the meeting. I actually asked um, George if we had to officially close the meeting tonight, and he said no, that we voted with our feet and that we're okay. So do I have a motion to accept the April 30th uh, board meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. And then we have a special hotel board meeting on May 22nd at five o'clock. Kevin, you weren't there. It was just for the purposes of approving the warrant. So, can I have a motion from? So Jeff? moved. Can you have a second, Dan? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Okay. Okay. So, do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Do I have a second? For the purposes of? Purpose of talking about. Um, how to explain um, a 
disciplinary disciplinary charges disciplinary against action. disciplinary action against Sorry, an employee in the highway here. garage. Second. Okay. All but in favor? But before that, do you have any budget mods you want to do? We did it. We did the budget Please. mods. We did it. Oh, wait, you said did those just come out? They weren't in here, so. Uh, no, no, I had them. I looked at the budget mods before, but then I only found that one thing in my folder. So maybe when I was going through it with Carol, I didn't put it back in. So why don't you do those, Jeff? If you can. This is, I think, I can, it's all just, they're just about. They're just increased. They, they, well, they, have, from? they do is you increase the line and oh, increase the revenue. Village, oh, the village census checks. Yeah, uh, so it's to okay, increase so the line and the revenue. The first one revenue. is. Thanks, because I forget they are. Them. Yeah. Yes, okay, ones. these are the, uh, let's see, this is to increase the line to cover damage repair. Can we do these all as one? Oh, why don't we just do it this way? I just found Okay, them. to okay. Uh, the damage to 7F347, uh, increase line A980.2680.0, 1065 dollars and five cents. So and, moved. And increase A3120.4 PDCE. Same amount. One th same amount. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Our next for one is to allocate village payment 50% of cost of the full slide. For those of you that have not seen it nor ridden on it, it is an awesome slide. It has a turn in it. Chris, how much fun is that slide? <laughs> I didn't ask you how much fun it was putting it up, Chris. I asked you how much fun is it to ride it. <laughs> Did you ride it already, Chris? Well, unfortunately, yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> it is very fun. <laughs> Face down. Yeah, it, is, it is an actual tube, and uh, I want to thank the village very much for joining us to get this great slide for our pool, because it is a lot of fun, and the kids are enjoying it. I've been down there to watch them use it, and the water is 12 degrees. Wow and the children are enjoying it tremendously. I'm sorry, the water is 85 degrees. I, uh -huh. I'm sorry, it's very warm. Anyway, moving anyway, increase A980, 2089.00, uh, $6,489.09. Increase and the same to B522, 1620, and the same amount of 6489.99. So moved. Do so you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, motions are carried. So the next one, increase A980.2003.0, youth bus trips by $254. Increase account number A522731.432 by the same amount. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, increase uh, account number B980.209.0, other cultural <coughs> and recreational ink. Six four eight nine nine nine. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. And then we have one more for Jim Tinger. Um, um, we need to increase nine eight zero point two zero zero three for youth bus trips by two hundred fifty four dollars, and then increase the revenue line. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Rosanna, do you sign these or do I sign these? I'll sign, okay, I'll sign them and give them to you before we leave. Okay, so now I just need a motion to go into executive session for the purposes of talking about disciplinary procedures for a highway employee. So, so moved. Second. Okay, motion so carried.
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, I'd like um, to make a motion for the town to appoint to um, hire a hearing examiner for purposes of uh, addressing concerns raised by an employee as part of a, a uh, union process. Okay, to come out of the DB fund. Okay, we'll have to figure out which line. Um, maybe it's not. Okay, all in favor? Did I have a motion? No, you made the motion. Okay, I'll second it. I'd like to move uh, that. Wait, wait, all in favor? Aye. Motion so carried, okay. I'd like to move uh, to permit Chris Marks to hire five uh, part time summer helpers at the uh, established pay rate. Based on the union contract, the contract for part timers? Yes. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Do I have a motion to close the meeting? No, I make it. Did we make a motion for Chris for the hearing officer? We did. Oh, well, you guys mind. were talking. Never mind. So, can I have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion so carried. Thank you, Evan.